Hello folks, it's Dominoid once again with another new video for you. And I have been to Play Expo in Manchester. If you don't know about Play Expo, then it's very strange that you're on my channel considering I talk about retro gaming all the looming time. But if you don't know, it is the largest retro gaming expo in the UK, and it was in the Central Convention Hall, Central Hall, Hall of Central, Con it was in a warehouse in Manchester. Got up to a fair few things and brought some lovely things home, and that's what I'm going to share with you today. So here's some of the cool stuff that I got up to.
Okay, everybody, hello. So, my name is DJ Slope. There, there it is, look at that. DJ Slope from Slope's Game Room. Uh, you can find me on YouTube, but there's quite a lot of people here, so I'm hoping you guys know who I am. Uh, there you go. Because they were, were, were very competitive. So I would, I would, I would, um, we would show each other the game we wrote the night before and then uh, say, oh well, tomorrow I'll, I'll bring something better. I would bring a. Of course, there would be an absolutely no point going to a retro gaming event and not coming back with some retro gaming things. So I did. Uh, the first of which I have had hidden in plain sight all the way through this is a pocket pixel design t-shirt. And this is a special edition for the 30th anniversary of the Game Boy. Yes, that makes me feel old as well. Uh, incidentally, if you haven't already read it, then Game On have made a fantastic special edition, which I will link down in the description, uh, all dedicated to the Game Boy to celebrate that 30th anniversary. I have produced a lot of content for it, so if you enjoy me, and I'm guessing you're watching my video, so you probably think I'm all right, then you can read some of my writing in there. But if you don't enjoy me, there's loads of fantastic, talented writers that have also contributed to it, and my content only makes up a small part. So it's fine, you can skip my articles if you need to. Uh, I do recommend reading it, it's a brilliant magazine. Yes, this is my first, um, first issue. This was a special design uh, specifically for the Expo. I don't believe it's being made available on their website. But I will link their website down below because they make some awesome t-shirts, loads of controllers. You can get a Vectrex one, you can get all three different versions of the SNES slash Super Famicom. Uh, you can get the Atari 2600 joystick. There's loads of awesome things. Unfortunately, nothing Amstrad yet, but I'm sure that will come eventually. Uh, and the t-shirts are only £15 each. And if you get in with Early Bird on the Monday that they launch a new shirt, because there's a new one every Monday, then you can get it for nine quid, which is an absolute bargain. So what else did I get? Well, I got some more t-shirts. So whilst there, we saw John Robertson's awesome stand-up show, um, The Dark Room. Uh, if you don't know The Dark Room, it's basically a cross between text adventure games and a stand-up comedy show with a lot of audience participation. Really, really funny. It's a lot of improv comedy. 
Um, he's an absolutely hilarious guy. I met him, he's a lovely bloke as well. You awake to find yourself in a dark room. The dark room is a comedy by a gamer for gamers. It's a live action text adventure game. The audience plays. If you just asked what's a text adventure, congratulations, puberty will arrive soon, you miserable pimpled embryo. Text adventures are video games from the 1980s, back when games were hard and good, just the way your mother likes it. During the show, five audience members will be picked to try to escape the dark room. They will pick options off the screen. If they succeed, they'll win a thousand pounds. But if they fail, <laughs> they will die. You die! You die! Then at the end, we'll have the democracy round where the whole crowd plays at once. <laughs> Hundreds of people screaming about what they want. <laughs> this is real democracy. Or, to be fair, Reddit. Now, because modern gamers can't do anything without a tutorial, here's how you play. Four options will appear. Pick one of them now. Find light switch. How will you find the light switch? You're in a dark room. You need the light switch to see. Do you see? I see. Bullshit, you see. You're in a dark room. It's like that for an hour. And yeah, the show has uh, a lot of elements which spoke to the uh, the gamer and the geek in me. So I ended up with two t-shirts, one for me and one for my partner. So this is what every show starts with, loading anxiety. And quite frankly, that's how I start most mornings. So that had to be bought. This one is mine. And uh, the other one, which is a reference to one of the prizes that he gives away in the show, it's a flamboyant flamboyant potato. Uh, this one was the one that my partner got. I probably would have caught the flamboyant potato had she not got that first. And I didn't want to be uh, taking the same t-shirt as her, but we're, we're pretty much the same size, so I might just pinch it from her every now and then. Either way, great shirts, and the dark show is absolutely hilarious. Uh, there is a YouTube channel, so again, I will link that down below. Uh, do check it out, really, really funny. Next up, this is sort of cheating because I didn't actually get this at the expo, but this is Nostalgia Nerd's book, Retro Tech, uh, Computers, Consoles and Games. Uh, if you don't know Nostalgia Nerd, then you should do. He's a brilliant retro YouTuber. He does a lot of retro computing uh, and retro technology as well as gaming. Uh, he was present there and I kept going to his stall and I did want to get a copy of the book and get it signed preferably because he was doing that and that seemed like a lovely thing to have. But every time I went there, I missed him uh, because of course he was at the expo for himself as well. So he wasn't at the stand all day. And every time I went there, I missed him. I had to fit everything alongside interviews and talks and so on. So uh, I just kept missing him and then meant to go on the Sunday when I had a bit of free time, completely forgot. However, on the train on the way home, uh, I ordered this and uh, all because of Amazon Prime, I had it back home at the point that I got home. So yay for Amazon Prime. And this is a lovely, lovely book. It's like one, um, it's not quite a coffee table book. It's somewhere between a coffee table book and a very informative tone. Uh, so it has got the kind of lovely illustrations that you would expect from a coffee table book, classic systems, classic accessories for them, um, some of the insides as well so you can see how these things worked but it's also got really informative uh, write-ups about them, covers some of the best games that you could get for the systems, um, just really really good stuff. So yeah if you don't have this already it's um, at the time of recording anyway was very very cheap on Amazon uh, so get yourself a copy it's a great book. So that's all the merchandise that I got. Now the next thing, of course, we're going to want to see some games. And the first thing I got, Amstrad Action Pack uh, from August 1992. It is tape number 17. So if you don't already know, I'm a huge Amstrad fan and I grew up reading Amstrad Action. Uh, I bought it right up until the very end when it was basically just a pamphlet with a cover disc. 
cover tape even. Um, and I love these cover tapes. I got so many great games off of here because you always got a complete game on the tape as well as uh, a lot of demos of things. So this one, it came with a full game of Defenders of the Earth. It came with uh, Dreadris, which is basically Tetris. Uh, it also came with a music program called Supersonic. Um, so actually two complete games and a complete program, but it also contained all of the Amstrad Action type-ins so that you didn't have to actually go as far as to type them in yourself. It came with pokes for games if you needed it. Uh, it was really, really good. Um, oh, this one comes with a Croco Magento screen designer. So now you can design your own version. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I've been collecting these cover tapes for a little while now. I'm aiming to get a, a full collection of all of them. Uh, and yes, I know I could get the games that were on here generally elsewhere. Not maybe, not necessarily the type-ins, but I'm far too lazy to actually type those. And it's just a bit of nostalgia. I really like it. And this only cost me two quid, so I, uh, I, you can't complain at two quid for a full version of Defenders of the Earth. But it wasn't just Amstrad. I also picked up these three Dreamcast games as well. And I don't have a particularly large Dreamcast library at the moment, so it's one of the consoles that I am trying to get a fair few more games for. And this was a purchase that I made quite late in the day on the Sunday, so the uh, the chap at the store was trying to go home with the smallest amount of stock he possibly could. So he said he'd do a deal. So I got these three for 40 quid, which I'm pretty impressed at, uh, especially when we consider this very first game, now, this actually started at £25 on the ticket on its own, and already that was a pretty good price. So Dynamite Cop, if you don't know the game, is actually the sequel to the Japanese game Dynamite Cop. In Japan, this is known as Dynamite Cop 2. And the reason that here it was known as Dynamite Cop and not the second one was because the first one was released over here, but not under the name Dynamite Cop. It was actually released as Die Hard Arcade. So yeah, this is essentially Die Hard Arcade 2. Now, they didn't use the Die Hard license in Japan. Presumably, the film wasn't as popular over there, so they used Dynamite Cop name. When they made the second game, they presumably no longer had the license or didn't want to pay for it. Uh, so they just used the Japanese name of the original game. But to avoid confusion, they didn't put the two on, and they just uh, just called it Dynamite Cop. Are you confused? Yes, me too. Good. So yeah, I thought 25 quid was already a, a pretty good price. In fact, there's two labels on here. I wonder, did he reduce it over the course of the weekend? Uh, yeah, it was 30 pounds initially. It's 30 pounds reduced to 25 and he, uh, he's also done me a deal uh, with these other games. But this, this will generally cost you between 30 and 40 pounds on its own if you're buying it at eBay prices. So 30 pounds was a decent deal to start with. 25 pounds was, I thought, a very good price. Um, and to get it with two other games for 40 quid, I feel I got a brilliant bargain. And it is in really good condition. Uh, we've got the manual there with minimal dints, no tearing. The disc is in pretty good condition. I mean, there's a few superficial scratches on there, which you always expect with a second-hand game. But it all works. It's a lovely game, and I probably will feature it in a future video so that you can see it. I might even do a little bit of a history of it because it is an interesting little title. Uh, this one is uh, from Bizarre Creations. Um, what else did they do? They did Creatures, I think, as well. Uh, they did quite a few. It was published by Acclaim, and uh, it, is, uh, it is a sort of run-and-gun um, shooter. It's called Fur Fighters. Uh, it's generally seen as being one of the uh, one of the better FPSs on the Dreamcast. And it's one that I've been after for a while because it's a little bit wacky, it's a little bit odd, and this, it's the sort of thing I love. Uh, it's not a game that takes itself too seriously. It's cute furry woodland animals fighting each other, so that's pretty good. If you look on here, you can see it's got the Electronics Boutique logo on it, which means, presumably, this was a used game that came through Electronics Boutique. And uh, in the UK, at least, Electronics Boutique no longer exist. I think they still exist in America. Uh, but over here, they got bought out by game, I believe, in the late 90s, maybe early 2000s. And uh, I have to say, I don't really miss them because they were dreadful. Uh, and they used to do this. They used to write all over the flipping manuals of their 
uh, they're used games, which is a pain if you're a collector, but it doesn't matter. I'm not collecting these things for the case of being pristine. I'm collecting them to play, and this is playable, and that's all that I'm worried about. So that's Fur Fighters. Uh, and the third title that I got, I'll be honest with you, I know absolutely nothing about. Uh, every now and then I'd like to pick up a game that I've never heard of, that I've never played, and I found this. Kao the Kangaroo. I think it's pronounced Kao or Cow. Um, he's got boxing gloves, so I'm guessing it's KO, as in, like, KO knockout, because that's a hilarious pun. Now, he looks quite low poly on the front there, and it might not even be a very good game, because it doesn't look like it's uh, particularly graphically intensive, but that doesn't matter, because Jet Set Willy isn't particularly graphically intensive, but that's still a classic. Um, so, yeah, I don't really know anything about it. It's by Titus, and generally I quite liked Titus games. Uh, I've played quite a few of their games, uh, recently completed um, their... Uh, English translation of Incredible Crisis on the PS1. If you watch me on Twitch, then you'll have seen that. If not, it'll be on the YouTube channel eventually, because I do put my streams up to uh, to save them for posterity. Posterity? For posterity. What they did very well, Titus, was they did do a good, cute mascot platformer, and that seems to be exactly what this game is. Uh, just reading off the back here, it's ooh, very hard to read. It's Dark black on dark blue. I don't know if you can see that. That is a bit tricky. So it says, Care of the Kangaroo is a hind-stomping third-person 3D arcade adventure featuring an energetic marsupial with overdeveloped hindquarters and an eye for a fight. Armed with comedy-sized boxing gloves, Care of the Kangaroo hops, skips, and triple jumps his way across 25 incredible landscapes. Um... Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, like I say, I, don't, I didn't know anything about it, but I like mascot platformers, and this one looked like it might be quite good. It might be terrible, I don't know, but I will probably feature it on the channel in the future so that you can find out, and uh, I'm sure there's people watching this who are saying either, oh, Dominoid, why don't you know about that? It's a great game, or they're going, oh, you're in for a world of pain with that. So uh, if you are, then just pop that down in the comments, because uh, I'd love to hear from you. So that's everything. That is all of the awesome stuff that I brought back from Play Expo. Uh, I did bring back, of course, a load of footage for Game Grin as well. So do check out GameGrin.com and the Game Grin YouTube channel if you want to see more of the things I got up to, including a really awesome cosplay video that uh, features some fantastic costumes that were there over the weekend. If you're not already, please consider subscribing. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave us a comment below and consider ringing the bell if you are subscribed already. That way you can be the first to know when I put up a new video. And I'm aiming at the moment for around two videos a month at least, not counting Let's Plays. Uh, I'm also doing Let's Plays every Sunday. I stream on Twitch around three o'clock. So you can find me there, Dominoid747. And those also appear on this YouTube channel. So if you can't catch it at the time, that's fine. You can watch it later on. So thank you very much. I have been Dominoid and this has been my Play Expo haul. I will see you soon, but until then, cheers everybody.